Welcome, dear students. Today we are going to talk about uh, political science and I really hope that at the end of this uh, lecture or at the end of this class you will feel motivated to come to Galishim University and to study political science and international relations in uh, English program. So uh, today's topic is uh, political behavior, which is a specific area of uh, political science. And uh, as you can see, I gave the title to today's presentation as uh, behind the scenes, the baking of politics, which basically refers to the fact that I would like to give you a glimpse about uh, how uh, political science works in practice. Uh, what are the things that you are going to study here and uh, how to make a uh, little insight uh, into this uh, field. Basically, when you uh, think about politics, it's a very abstract uh, type of uh, science. It's hard to define. Those students who are asked uh, whether they study history or uh, physics or biology, it's quite easy to define it. Uh, everyone who studies uh, physics, mathematics, biology can answer this question. But what about politics? Uh, when a student is asked uh, what he or she studies, uh, it's hard to define uh, what politics uh, is. Just to give you a few examples, uh, do you know when was the first social movement or uh, which was the first uh, mass movement? What is a political party? What is a political program? Uh, what are uh, biopolitics as uh, different movements? So all of these uh, questions basically have an answer in uh, political science, especially in uh, political behavior. So first, let's just uh, look at the term uh, politics itself. What is uh, politics? In order to make uh, a quite clear comment on politics, we need to look at these five attributions. First of all, it is an activity. So it only happens uh, through participation. Uh, you cannot uh, do politics or you cannot be part of politics as, uh, as a silent person. Secondly, it is a social activity. So uh, politics doesn't work only within yourself or with uh, one person. So you need a group of people, uh, preferably you need a whole society who is uh, involved in uh, politics. Basically, politics is everywhere. Uh, it seems to be a very far away uh, topic, uh, but it's everywhere at every aspect of life. Um, in uh, city structure, in economics, in, um, in geography, everywhere. So uh, the third uh, most important factor of politics is that it uh, derives from diversity. Since there are a lot of uh, different people with different ideas, with uh, different uh, ways of thinking, uh, they create different parts of uh, politics. This uh, diversity uh, is closely rela related to conflict. Uh, conflict that is basically uh, aims uh, or politics aims at uh, solving conflicts or uh, at least to negotiating the outcomes uh, of uh, these conflicts. And uh, finally, it's about uh, decisions. Decisions that are made in order to uh, solve these uh, different types of uh, conflicts. So uh, when we want to say uh, in one word, so let's say when uh, someone asks you, uh, what do you study when you study politics? Then you can say that you study politics, which is basically the search for um, conflict resolution. So the search for conflict resolution. And um, if we uh, look at this concept uh, further, then we can see that uh, three distinct uh, conceptions of uh, politics can be understood. Like, um, it is associated with uh, institutions. So nowadays, when we think about politics, uh, quite often we associate it with a government. 
uh, or with different uh, political parties. Secondly, it is uh, always associated with public activities. So uh, we usually know the political opinion of those people who go public or we can usually solve a political problem that is uh, brought in front of uh, the society. So something like uh, activity. If you, uh, let's say, stay at home and you watch political programs on TV, uh, that is basically not politics. Politics always needs some kind of activity. And uh, whenever uh, you can uh, express or you can do an activity, it's, uh, for example, through voting. This is the, the most obvious um, form of uh, political activity in a democratic uh, society. And um, finally, we can also say that it's usually attributed uh, to the distribution of uh, power, to the distribution of uh, those um, factors that uh, have an effect on other people's uh, life. When we want to uh, say what politics is, so when you will be asked, what do you study? Uh, you can um, quote a quotation from uh, Bismarck, who was, uh, don't be afraid if you don't know uh, the names uh, whom, are, uh, whom I am talking about. You will uh, study about these people during your uh, university studies. Otto von Bismarck was, for example, um, very prominent uh, German uh, politician. He was basically the mastermind of the uh, German uh, unification in the uh, 1870s. And uh, as a result of this, he was um, leading uh, Germany for uh, 20 years. So he had a major uh, impact on uh, European uh, public affairs. That is why it is worse to um, consider his thoughts. So he said that politics is not a science, but an art. So uh, it's basically not something that you can study, uh, but it's something that uh, comes from a person's uh, personality, uh, knowledge, and uh, in general, uh, from uh, political behavior. But what is this art? Uh, when we hear the word art, uh, the first thing that comes to your mind is like uh, paintings, uh, singing, dancers. So that is what we associate with art. But uh, from a political perspective, art uh, is like the art of government. So uh, how you can uh, master governing people, uh, how you can master um, political programs, uh, how you can uh, master uh, your own uh, ideas. And uh, basically, uh, this, uh, so this sentence or this quotation from Bismarck can be considered as the classical uh, definition of uh, politics. So uh, whomever asks you, uh, what do you study or what do you plan to study? Uh, you can simply say this, that you want to uh, study politics, uh, that is an art. This is basically in parallel uh, with the classical uh, Greek uh, or with the classical Athenian definition of uh, politics. Uh, we will not find any fixed definition of uh, politics since it is an abstract uh, study. It's not concrete. Uh, so there's nothing uh, how you can clearly define it. But there are certain points uh, in our history uh, to which we can associate uh, basically politics. And the first of this is the ancient Greece, uh, which is uh, basically considered something like the, the ideal uh, case of politics or the, the role model of uh, politics. The word itself, politics, originates uh, from the ancient Greece and um, it comes from polis, which uh, literally translated uh, means uh, city-state, and it resembles to the ancient Greek society, which was uh, divided into different city-states. Each of them was independent, and uh, each of them had its own governing rules. So uh, this is a clear example how you can make a 
differentiation between uh, good and bad politics, between uh, those people who are dealing with politics, how do they do it. Uh, it's quite interesting to, um, to study uh, these and to, to look at them uh, more in depth. So uh, this uh, city-state uh, basically uh, can be associated with the classical uh, definition of democracy. Uh, because politics, since we consider it an art, uh, art, it's usually something positive. So it's um, whenever you, um, let's say, go to the theater or just simply listen to, to music, uh, you listen to those pieces of arts which you like. So uh, from this perspective, you have to look at politics like this. You have to search for something positive and uh, the classical democracy, the model of classical democracy is definitely something this, uh, something very uh, positive. Now, uh, I would like to give you certain patterns of these uh, political uh, studies of these um, clues that basically constitute uh, your future studies. A key role is given to the individual. Uh, politics is unimaginable without individuals. It's always individuals who make uh, politics. And uh, in general, when you look at uh, individuals, uh, all of you who are interested in politics, I am sure you have uh, a favorite uh, political character um, or either uh, from a contemporary politician or someone from the past. So it's, um, it's usually this individual to whom you can uh, associate uh, politics. This individual, it's, uh, it's not staying by itself. Um, in the world. It's usually um, linked to certain cultural inheritance, to certain societies, to um, certain um, uh, ideas. Uh, first of all, we have to make a difference between political leaders and uh, political thinkers. These are the two main groups of individuals who have a role in, uh, in political science. Political leaders are those people who basically make politics and uh, political thinkers are those people who uh, analyze politics. So they are the ones who tell us if the political leaders did something uh, bad or they did something uh, good. Uh, basically those ones who are political leaders we can also call them uh, political uh, practitioners. They are guided by their uh, own behavior and uh, decision making unconsciously. So it's political thinkers, it's in the name itself, they think about it. Uh, leaders, they don't really think about, uh, they do it. Uh, quite often there is a saying that uh, someone who knows something doesn't really think about it, just does it. So this is how political uh, practitioners uh, work. On the other hand, uh, the, the role of political thinkers, so the other big uh, group of um, individuals, their role is uh, not negligible. Uh, they have a very important role since their ideas, philosophies, uh, ideologies are very important to political uh, life. And uh, Basically, the two couldn't exist without each other. So we need political leaders who do something and we need political thinkers who think about the consequences, uh, the results, who analyze uh, things, who give some guidance, who raise awareness to, to certain things. So uh, from this comes that politics cannot be simply said as uh, being shaped by those individuals who dream up the ideas. Uh, since politics is a, an art, so we defined politics as an art, it's uh, something like the realization of a person's dreams. This is uh, what basically all the big politicians of our history did. They, they had a dream and they made it realize. So this is how um, political uh, practitioners uh, work. But uh, 
without doubt, uh, the ideas uh, of the political thinkers, they have not only shaped, but they have also changed history. They had a very big uh, impact on uh, inspiring political leaders, either as um, different experts or aides or, uh, or in different functions. Here uh, you can see uh, the role of uh, individuals with, uh, with their institutions. Uh, if you remember, I told you that um, institution uh, is again something to which uh, we can associate with uh, politics. Hope you remember that uh, two slides uh, before, I just uh, told you that uh, politics is quite often associated with government, with an office, with an office holder. So uh, from this perspective, politics is not something uh, very rigid, but it's something elastic. Uh, I have put here a quotation for you uh, to, uh, to make it more understandable what this uh, flexibility means. Uh, Asquith is a big political thinker, a British political thinker, who basically said that the office of the British Prime Minister was whatever its holder chose to make out of it. Uh, so you can see that uh, different people who master the art of politics, they can do different things. So those ones who uh, master the art of politics much better than the others, they can do much better politics. Those who don't really master uh, this political art, they will do worse politics. It's, uh, it's parallel, you can draw parallel with, uh, with any different uh, type of uh, art, like with a painter or with a dancer, who is better uh, at uh, his or her art, will do much better paintings, will do much better music, uh, will have a much better uh, dance performance. Social contract uh, theory, it's uh, basically the oldest uh, theory in, uh, in our political history. It is uh, as old as philosophy um, itself, and uh, basically it talks about a person's uh, moral, how uh, this person is guided uh, by uh, his or her uh, morals. I've put here uh, a classical example of this, uh, through which I would like to explain to you what this social contract theory is. I really hope that you have already heard about Socrates, who is a big uh, Greek uh, thinker, political thinker, philosopher. And uh, he has an argument with uh, Crito, a young man, who committed a crime and uh, wants to leave Athens because he wants to escape from prison and uh, from the punishment. And uh, Socrates uh, manages to persuade him to stay and to face the punishment and to accept uh, the penalty that is imposed upon him simply because he argues with social contract theory. So um, he, Socrates says to Crito that uh, basically uh, the very fact that he can exist, it's up to social contract theory because uh, Crito's parents were uh, able to get married. So uh, their uh, love or their relationship, their marriage uh, was uh, made legal through social contract theory. Uh, then the fact that he was born and he wears his father's name, uh, it's again an example of social contract theory, which is something like an agreement between people and society. Uh, it's something that establishes rule and uh, order. Uh, then the fact that uh, he could go to school and he could got education, it's also part of uh, social contract theory since there are educational institutions. And once he grew up, uh, he could decide whether he wants to stay in Athens or to leave it. Uh, he could have decided to leave it and to take like all of his properties away from there because he didn't like that city and he, he wants to leave, but he decided to stay. And with staying, uh, he basically agreed to um, obey to the rules of the city and uh, to uh, agree uh, to all the, the rule of the uh, law uh, that is uh, there. So if he committed a crime, 
and he is put in jail and he is facing uh, death penalty, then basically he should accept because uh, he accepted in his uh, adulthood to stay in Athens and uh, to obey to the rules of, uh, of that city, of that uh, society. And this is basically how we work uh, as uh, social individuals in, uh, in our everyday life uh, as well. Uh, when you go to school, you basically decide to obey to the rules, to, to study, uh, to um, get a grade for, uh, for an exam or uh, for, a, for a homework. So this is how uh, this uh, social contract uh, theory works. I would like to give you a few more examples uh, that you will uh, study uh, more in depth if you uh, come to, to Galicia University and if you uh, decide to uh, choose political science and uh, international relations. That is the social, uh, the rational choice uh, theory. It's uh, quite often associated with voters' uh, rational behavior. So far I haven't really talked about uh, how uh, politics is made, like uh, who are the people who are voting uh, to, uh, to certain uh, politicians or uh, what is a political program. But um, what you can see here, it's, um, it's more like the, the background, uh, so what makes uh, politics in, uh, in general. Uh, rational choice theory can be very uh, easily uh, explained to you through an example, uh, the example of the opportunity cost. Uh, these phrases or these uh, words might uh, seem uh, difficult uh, to you, but uh, don't worry if you don't understand them at this point. Uh, I will explain what they mean. For example, if you decide to uh, study a uh, Master of Business Administration, uh, there you have to pay a tuition fee and uh, you will also have some uh, costs of living that you will have to pay for. Let's suppose that this is uh, $10,000. Uh, At the same time, you, uh, you are offered the job so you could work. Uh, and this is a dilemma, so you have to choose between studying or working. If you um, think on the short term, then you will accept the job offer because you will receive money uh, like within a few months and uh, you will have a benefit out of it. Uh, the benefit of, uh, of your studies you will only see later. Uh, when you finish your studies, you gain the knowledge. Uh, also, when you um, get to know the people, the other, uh, the classmates, the teachers, which basically can provide a network uh, for you, which uh, you can benefit later. So, uh, if you only think about uh, the, uh, the tuition fee and the cost of living, uh, that's a, a really big uh, amount. And... Uh, if you um, do this uh, with uh, turning down the job, uh, then basically you can also calculate how much do you lose, how much money you lose within those uh, three days. And uh, you can end up uh, losing uh, $30,000. Uh, but at this point, you did not um, deal with the opportunity cost, which is basically uh, beneficial in the longer run. It means that after uh, finishing your studies and getting your diploma, you can have a much uh, better job with a much higher paid salary. So let's say within 10 years, you will end up uh, earning more and having a diploma. So this is what uh, opportunity cost uh, basically means. Game theory, it's also something that uh, you are going to uh, study about. It's, uh, it's quite often uh, uh, illustrated through the prisoner's dilemma when uh, there are uh, two members uh, of a gang, so two uh, criminals. Uh, both of them are uh, put in jail, uh, but uh, the police doesn't really know who is the, the real um, 
who committed uh, the crime. So they want to test these two criminals and uh, they offer uh, both of them a deal. Uh, if they um, charge uh, the other one with committing the crime, then uh, their time spent in jail can be shortened. So at this point, they will try to, to think and uh, basically at uh, this point, at this dilemma, the only way to um, escape uh, from the punishment uh, would be if both of them stay silent and, uh, and, and they don't accuse the other ones uh, with committing the crime. Uh, but in fact, uh, in most of the cases, this is not what happens because they cannot communicate with each other and they don't know what the other says. And uh, since um, in the short term they uh, think that they will profit if they accuse the other, uh, this is uh, more or less the thing what, uh, what usually happens, that uh, one of the gang members accuses uh, the other and um, it's usually that one uh, who is uh, imprisoned. Uh, the last uh, theory that I would like to, to show you to, to give an example of uh, how uh, politics basically penetrates uh, our life and uh, how important it is at every area. Uh, economic theory is also uh, something you are going to learn uh, about uh, during your uh, university studies. It's about uh, the fact uh, that happens to us when we buy something. Uh, and it works in the same way when uh, we vote for a political party or when we like a politician. Um, so for example, when you decide to, to go to a football match or uh, to support uh, your athletic team, it's, uh, it's by uh, paying for the ticket to that uh, specific match. Uh, but you do this because you like how they play. You do not really think about uh, uh, the, uh, the, the costs uh, or uh, the money uh, that this sports club will receive from your ticket. So you do not do it because you want to help them. You simply do it because you like it. And um, if you do um, some shopping, you go to the grocery and uh, let's say you buy apples or uh, banana, uh, cherry, whatever. Uh, you do it because you want to eat something healthy, uh, because you consider eating fruits and vegetables healthy. You do not really do it because you want to invest uh, in the future of farming or uh, you don't really think about uh, uh, making uh, agriculture more green. Uh, you simply do these things because um, you want to eat something healthy. However, if you buy uh, more expensive products, with that you will help agriculture as well. So this is how it works with, uh, with politics. Uh, if you vote to someone whom you like, um, that uh, person, uh, hopefully a charismatic leader, I uh, hope you remember what I uh, told you about uh, different uh, types of uh, authorities. So uh, that person will be able to, to master the art of uh, politics with your help. So this is what happens with uh, expressive uh, voting. Uh, I will uh, tell you uh, about uh, these uh, different voter types uh, a little bit uh, later at uh, this stage. And uh, at this point, I would like to uh, show you some uh, real life examples. So uh, up until now, you could hear or learn about some um, abstract things, but uh, let's just look at what uh, comes uh, to, uh, to real life events. So what has politics uh, achieved so far? Um, I have chosen uh, some examples from the 20th century and also from the 21st century. So something that had an effect on our past and something that has an effect on our present. Uh, the American politics is uh, quite uh, well known. So it's, um, it's a country whose history is, uh, uh, is quite easy to, to check, to, to follow. It was uh, President uh, Kennedy who had uh, uh, in his very first uh, speech, 
he had uh, two aims. He talked about two things that he wants the first person to go to the moon, the first American person. And uh, he wants to achieve really great uh, outbreaks in, uh, in health care. So these were the two key points in, uh, in his speech. And uh, basically, in very short time, uh, he managed to, um, uh, to do both of them. There was the first heart transplant in the United States in, 16, uh, in 67, 1967. And uh, in fact, the first person, um, namely Neil Armstrong, went to the moon uh, in uh, 1969. In the 21st century, we also had uh, some examples of this. We don't really see the, uh, the outcomes, uh, but they are quite, uh, they are as big steps as the examples that I have shown you in. So, um, in the 21st century, uh, two very big uh, steps were uh, artificial intelligence. It has a really big uh, impact uh, both on healthcare and in uh, space program, in education, in everything, and uh, also genetic uh, engineering. So these two examples are parallel with the ones uh, that I showed you from the 20th century but we don't know yet uh, its, uh, its results. Uh, basically, what we can see here, it's a keyword uh, of the 20th and 21st century, which is called Industry 4.0. It's a political program uh, which aims at uh, making um, economy uh, boost uh, very fast. And uh, if you have heard about industrial revolutions, previously they meant like revolutionizing agriculture and um, farming industry. But the first one is more like revolutionizing or upgrading human beings themselves, making them much smarter, more healthier, uh, more good looking, uh, so whatever is, uh, the is at the benefit of uh, people. And basically, this uh, Industry 4.0 has uh, very good examples in, uh, in China uh, with the introduction of uh, robots. Uh, robots that can help people at different ways of life, like in uh, healthcare, education, uh, services, so these are all at the, um, at the benefit of uh, people. Here you can see a few examples what have already been done uh, with the help of um, Industry 4.0. Just to mention one here, uh, it was uh, based on a report of the Science magazine, which reported that two artificial intelligence algorithms have learned to translate from one language to another in one day. Imagine how big help is this for people uh, of the 21st century, both in commerce, in education, in, in every way of life. And you can communicate with another person whose uh, language you don't know, and you can uh, learn to use this algorithm, uh, which will help you in, in, in such a, a very short uh, amount of time. So here you can see uh, some of the um, results that we already know uh, how Industry 4.0 has affected uh, politics. And uh, finally, I would like to, to show you which uh, is the role of Society 5.0. It's like a future event, as I have told you, uh, some examples that are uh, very much uh, true for the 20th century can be considered as 4.0 and uh, something that refers to the future. It's, um, it's 5.0, which will result a lot of uh, different um, um, results in uh, labor market uh, consuming of um, uh, people, social and uh, human capital. I have mentioned uh, to you uh, President Kennedy. Uh, 
many times as uh, a politician whom hopefully all of you have heard about. He had a very uh, good saying that I've put here. He said that if not us, who? If not now, when? As a clear example of uh, what politics can achieve and uh, how important uh, it is to act when uh, there is an uh, opportunity. And with this, I would like to thank you for uh, your attention. And uh, I really hope that uh, you uh, had um, a chance to understand what uh, this topic is about and uh, that you will uh, choose to, to study at uh, this university.